What's up guys? My name is Nick Davis. Welcome to another 239 Flies installment. Uh, today I'm going to teach you how to tie the uh, deer hair mega lollipop, which yes, uh, we will be tying with the dreaded deer hair. Uh, don't be afraid of it. Don't be scared of it. Don't let it know you're afraid of it. And as long as you are the one that's in charge and it knows that you are alpha, you'll be fine. Uh, deer hair, uh, it's a lot like a T-Rex or an alligator. If you let it know that you're afraid of it, it will eat your soul. But if you maintain the high ground and you make it your bitch, you'll master it. And today I'm going to show you how to do that. So without further ado, let's do this. All right. So deep breath. Let's get started. I'm making this out to be worse than it is. Because you guys think that this is worse than it is. It's really not bad. Just got to stay calm. We're going to use the Neon Grape DIY kit today. It's one of my favorite colors. I love this fly. It's just, I don't really not huge on tying with natural materials. Um, but just this fly uh, uses mostly natural materials. And it's, it's just one of my favorite flies. Awesome little mullet profile. Super snooky, super tarpony. Uh, redfish will eat the hell out of it too. There's nothing that won't eat a small bait fish. If, if it's a predatory fish, it will eat a small bait fish. So let's get going. Black Danville 210. Start at the eye. Work, work, work all the way back. Just past the bend of the hook. Thread should hang at the barb. Like so many of our other patterns. We are going to delve right into the red medium cactus chenille. Get some of the bullshit off of there. And we're going to tie that in. And we're just going to Palmer. We're going to Arnold Palmer, RIP King. Just until it starts to get up to where the hook straightens out. And then we're going to tie that off. Next, we're going to grab our bucktail. Love tying pink flies and wearing pink shirts. We're going to use some fiber that is towards the top end, the top of the tail here, top section of the hide from here to here. These aren't hollow. These are, um, you know, dense. They're full. So when you, when you cinch them down, and when you tie them onto the hook, they're not going to splay outwards. So just a little tip. If that ever happens to you when you're tying on some bucktail, try to figure out where you're cutting it from. And if you just move towards the top of the bucktail, uh, that problem will remedy itself for you. Pretty thin. We don't need to use a lot of this. And we're going to tie that in right on top of the hook. And we're going to wrap back to our cactus chenille. And you can see how I'm pulling on this super tight and it's not flaring. So let's just, let me just show you here. We're going to use some fibers from the very back section. Let's get, these might spin. And just so you can see what I'm talking about. If you were going to cut, if you were going to use your tail with this, I'll show you here. See that? As soon as you move back to the side of the tail, you get that. The further up you move, the more you get that. Take this, pull up on it, trim straight. Give yourself a nice little ramp there to secure and tie on top of. Cinch that down. Now, if you like, you can take your black Sharpie. I like to use the Sharpie Industrial Super Permanent Ink. And we're going to put, we're going to start about halfway back and we're going to put, I'm going to put three bars in this. You don't have to, very much an optional step, but I think it looks really cool in the natural fiber when it splays out like that. I like that. And really the bars just suggest movement when the fly is stationary. 
Next, we're going to take our purple Palmer chenille, as we do in so many of our flies. I love this stuff because it adds flash without adding bulk, and it's flash that doesn't foul. You add crystal flash or like a, uh, a, a strand flash. Um, there's, it's not very stiff, so there is a much greater chance of it fouling around the hook shank, you know, with a, with a bad cast or a bad presentation. So that's why I like the Palmer chenilles. Tie that in. All right. Next, we're going to take our black Arctic Fox and our lice brush. I'm going to comb out a little section. And this is going to be the bottom of the collar. We're going to tie this pretty thick for this demonstration. You don't have to tie it as thick when you're tying these to go fishing with. That'll work. Flip your vise over. If you don't have a rotary vise, flip your fly over. And we're going to split these fibers with our hook point and we're going to lay this on there just like that. And that should cover the bottom half of the hook shank, which it does. We've done that right. You don't have to worry about trimming this yet. We'll do it all at once. Just going to repeat that step on top of the hook shank. Grab another little bit of Arctic Fox. And you can kind of figure this out when you're playing with it, when you're tying it. You know, if it's not enough, if it's not enough uh, hair to go around the hook shank, use more. If it's too much and it's too bulky, use less. Take this, put this on top, make sure that covers. And spread it around the top half of the hook with your fingers. A little check there. All right, we're looking good. All right, now. Take our scissors, and if we trim and we tie, or if we trim and we uh, tie in at the same time without trimming the bottom and trimming the top, that ensures that we're going to kind of trim both top and bottom portion of the collar equally with one another, and we're not going to have like you know this bottom hump all the way out here and then the top hump all the way back there. Just helps us stay kind of consistent. So move your thread forward just a little bit, get rid of your excess, and next we're going to use these uh, double pupil lead eyes and extra small. You can also use large bead chain, you can use medium bead chain, you can use whatever. Um, kit comes with these. I like these eyes, they got a nice bait fish look to them, and also uh, since we're using deer hair, deer hair is very buoyant. So I like a little extra weight. Take some loon hardhead. Oh, that's crusty. Didn't close that well. And we'll just put just a little bit right on top so we can secure this in and it holds nice. Money. All right, now. Bring your thread back to the middle. And this is where shit gets real. Grab your purple deer hair. Look at it. Say, I'm gonna own your ass. Immediately the deer hair will get scared. Let's get this separated out nice like. Grab it with my left hand. Come in there and trim it close to the hide. Grab it, turn it upside down. I kind of want to tie this in. See where these, these little fibers are pointing upwards? I want to tie that in like that on the hook shank. I'm going to hold it on top. Make sure this is taut. Go around it once, go around it twice. Spin with my fingers. Tight. Work my thread in there like such and just secure it on top of the hook shank. We're on, we're spawning, it's that easy. We're not building rockets. You just gotta be patient, but you gotta be firm with it. If you're not firm with it, it's gonna slide, you're gonna break your thread. You do it a couple of times, 
you'll be golden. And when you got your thread on the bottom like this, just work it between the fibers behind the eyes of the hook and then put, eh, put three or four wraps behind the eye of the hook and in front of the deer hair. And what that's going to do is it's going to push the hair back from the eyes a little bit and it's also going to kind of pack the uh, deer into the head. And bring it in front of the eyes. I'm going to whip finish, or I'm sorry, uh, put a couple of half hitches on the eye of the hook. Trim, nice and solid. Next, I'm going to grab our double-sided razor. You can just grab your scissors and start hacking at this, but the preferred method is with the double-sided razor. And you're going to let the eyes kind of guide your razor. You're going to run parallel to the eyes and the hook shank. And just gently move your razor in a straight line, back the shank, and take off some deer hair. I usually start with the side that's closest to me. We'll check, yep, good. Turn it over, do the same on the other side. Trim them parallel to the eyes. Doing a, a gross removal, not so much fine detail and shaping work yet, just taking off the bulk. After you got both sides trim, I like to turn it over and get the bottom. I'll put a little bend in the hook kind of trim up at first just to give me an area that I can see and then I'll come in straight with a curved blade and take off that and then I'll come back in and kind of fine-tune and adjust the front don't be afraid to trim this stuff what you don't want to do is trim the far the fox hair that's what you don't want to do. You just want to get the deer hair. You get the sides a little bit with a curved blade. Check it. Yep. Pretty symmetrical. On the side that's closest to us again. And we're going to gently move our razor perpendicular to the hook shank and we're going to put a line in the deer hair and kind of create the the head of the fly and we're just going to put a nice line around it making sure this is even being careful not to trim the arctic fox let's take the front Pull another blend, another bend in our uh, in our blade, and we're going to trim up from the eyes at about a 45 degree angle. Put that little ramp in the deer hair like that. Put another bend in it, and we're going to go parallel to the hook and trim off the top. We're not going to trim all the top off. We're going to leave a little bit of the deer hair long and how we tied it in so that uh, we can kind of give the suggestion of a, of a fin. And then just come back in with a bent blade and touch it up. I like to put a, a complementary color to the fly. I like to choose a thread that's complementary to the fly. You know, this I'll use hot pink when I go to put the weed guard on because I just think it looks nice. And it's cheap and easy to do. Plus, you know, when you look at mullet, especially mullet that are tired or have been in the live well for a while, you'll notice they kind of have that 
real pink nose. I don't know whether that's from bumping into the side of the live well or from lack of oxygen. I don't know, but just kind of recognize that most injured mullet have a real pink nose. So that's why I like to put a nice pink nose in the majority of my mega lollipops. Get my 40 pound or 30 pound monofilament. This is Mason hard mono. Flatten out one little side of it. Reattach my thread. Tie in the flat side. Whip finish behind the weed guard. Then to get super fancy, you can take a little loon hardhead in a corresponding color. And put a little Cam Newton dab on it. And loon hardhead's pretty cheap. I think it's seven bucks for a for a bottle that'll last you 14 eternities. Slap it on there. Cure that up. We'll take this loon hardhead and clear because we're using purple. We don't have a purple loon hardhead. If we were using uh, chartreuse deer hair, we could use the chartreuse hardhead. If we were using black, we could use the black, you know, so on and so forth. But we don't have purple, so we'll use clear. Put a nice thin coat over your deer hair. Protect your time and effort. You can stick this on the dryer, but since this loon hardhead kind of stays where you put it, you don't really have to. You can just take it right off your vise, slap it on your bobbin cradle, and let it cure. And that's that.